close actually by uh, handing the microphone over to, to somebody who's in the room um, who's actually made it possible for us to have discussions like this. Um, so uh, Congressman Chakafad is serving his 11th term in the U.S. House of Representatives, the representative of Pennsylvania's 2nd District. So through, through his support of legislation and sponsorship, he's championed many e efforts aimed at improving Americans' quality of life. That includes very diverse things, mentoring for young people on STEM subjects, professional support for graduate students in STEM, programming to aid underserved students in preparation for college education, financial support for minority-serving education institu institutions. But he's been enormously influential and instrumental in his efforts to expand healthcare access, promote energy efficiency and conservation. Um, but he, whenever I talk to him about all of those things, he reminds me and says, but there's one big thing I care about, and that's neuroscience. And actually, you know, with his neuroscience initiative, he really aims to stimulate major progress in understanding the human brain by helping us coordinate neuroscience research by multiple federal agencies, drawing upon public-private partnerships and academia, and increasing the federal investment in neuroscience research. Uh, so, so far, he and the Neuroscience Initiative have, in, have already secured millions of dollars in increased neuroscience funding to the National Science Foundation in particular. He was instrumental in establishing the Interagency Working Group in 2012, um, and he is uh, you know, one of those folks that will help us answer the question about how much do we need. I think if we give him a good answer to that question, um, we will be able to work very effectively with Congress to get the uh, broad support that we need to make this happen. So, Congressman Fader, let me uh, give you the last word. Let me say, uh, first and foremost, I understand I'm the last person uh, standing between you and Jenna. So I won't uh, belabor the point, but I do want to, I've traveled a long way, uh, and I do want to make a few points. Uh, so one is that, uh, as far as the uh, discussion I've heard, uh, my view of this is that, uh, I think it was John Nesbitt who wrote in his book Megatrends, that we've moved from an either or uh, to a multiple opportunity society, right? So I don't think that the choice is between an observatory uh, and um, a user facility. I think that uh, you need to raise your vision above the immediate challenges that you see and think about the bigger picture. So when, when John F. Kennedy spoke at, at Rice in uh, the 1960, early 60s, he said, we're going to go to the moon. Uh, and it was a it was a political impulse uh, that uh, got the nation beyond the question of kind of incremental uh, notions to a much bigger challenge that was in front of us. So I think that um, yeah, I've been here before. I, I love this lab. I enjoyed my visit, but I love all the labs. I've been to almost every single one of them. I I know that the national labs are uh, the as part of our, our national scientific enterprise, they're like, a, um, they're like one of our national secrets. A lot of members of Congress don't even know they exist. But I'm convinced that the labs can play an indispensable role in terms of neuroscience. Now, neuroscience is my number one priority. Uh, I did write the language that created an agency working group, uh, and I wrote the language that um, in the, I'm an appropriator, so the way we do this is we we put into the agency's appropriations bill some direction about where we want to go. And so we stuck some language in the DOE appropriations bill after the discussion with my friends here. We, I don't know, a couple of years ago we met in Washington and uh, we said we wanted to move forward with this idea. Uh, and so DOE and the National Science Foundation, and we, we actually have put some dollars behind the effort to create uh, this uh, effort around a National Brain Observatory. I also think that we can think about it in that context, but we can also think about regional um, neurotechnology user facilities. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and you know, let me just say this, that, that you know, 
in my role on the Science Appropriations uh, uh, Subcommittee. Uh, I'm involved in a lot of issues around science. I believe in big science. Uh, but we had a uh, satellite, a glory, that was uh, in December, it was in uh, 2013. It didn't make orbit, it failed, it was $500 million. And we went back to work on the next satellite. Uh, the James Webb Telescope, when it gets launched, and I was originally priced at 400 million. It's going to be, you know, I think right now we're at about 10 billion dollars or so uh, going forward, and it's extraordinarily important. I'm a big supporter of the James Webb Telescope, but you can't possibly believe that what we're going to learn from it is um, as of the same level of importance it would be for us to have some sense about the three pounds in between our ears. We don't know how many cells are in the brain in the types of cells. We don't know how the brain in the worm works, let alone a mouse. We don't have just a, a, a physical outlet of the interconnections. This is an area that uh, there's still more ignorance than knowledge. And when you walk on the poster floor at the Society for Neuroscience, as I've done in San Diego, as I've done in Washington, and as some of you will do, there are going to be some great exhibits. They don't begin to get to the question about what we're going to do about a billion people in the world. This is the World Health Organization. It says a billion people suffer from a brain illness. We have 50 million plus Americans with some form of brain disease. In a country of 317 million people, that's a lot of people. And so on this year, we're going to spend $210 billion on care for Alzheimer's patients. Now, there's a, there's a notion that this is a choice between, you know, medicine or science. We're not going to be able to solve these health challenges if we don't do the science. If we, we have to have a fundamental understanding of just the highways and the byways, and then maybe some sense about how these chemical and electrical interactions uh, are actually, you know, working together in a way that takes a brain and creates our minds, right? Which we have no real sense of just yet. And so I think that, that what I want to tell you, the reason I came here today, is because we, as a Congress, we're committed to this. Okay, so I was in the East Room at the White House when the President announced the Neuroscience Initiative, the Brain Initiative, but that didn't start in the White House. It started in the minds of people, some of whom are in this room. It also started with legislative language that, for the first time, said we were going to make neuroscience the priority. Uh, I intend that it is going to be the leading priority for our scientific enterprise for a long while, because I'm convinced that not only can it help us in terms of the immediate issues around neurological diseases and disorders, that it can help us in education, in terms of cognition. Uh, it can help us in our economic uh, circumstances if we have the leadership in a neurotechnology industry. Uh, and, I, and so as a, there's so much we can do and also, you know, I know the labs well. Labs work together. They compete with each other. It's a, it's a fascinating uh, relationship, but in our, our nuclear weapons enterprise, uh, the labs are indispensable. It's wonderful that we can invest those dollars in, um, in our <coughs> nuclear weapons enterprise. It's an important deterrent. But wouldn't it be more wonderful for us to invest in something that could help a billion people in the world? Um, rather than just the question of building, you know, weapons. I mean, it is important that if we want more investment in science, we need to make science relevant to the lives of people. And there's not a family in our country that is not connected in some important way to these issues, whether it's autism or Alzheimer's or epilepsy, MS, you can go through the hundreds of diseases and take, take on the mental health side, take all of them together, put them in the same paragraph. You can put them on a slide, if you like slides. 
and you take this, this, this paragraph holds for almost, you can interchange the name of the disorder or the disease. We don't know exactly how it starts. We don't have an effective uh, treatment or cure or vaccine for it. And we don't have anything in a clinical trial that any of us who want to bet the ranch on is going to work. That's where we are for hundreds and hundreds, all of them. So whether it's schizophrenia or depression, and you go through the laundry list on it, an ALS. So the country has a need that the scientific community can actually help solve. And we should not be, um, we should not approach it with any level of passivity. We need to approach it with the same level when the NASA administrator, my great friend, uh, uh, Bolden testified before the probation committee, he said, you know, glory, the satellite failed. It's $500 million. We can't be in the business of being adverse to risk. We're gonna have things that don't work. But we are pursuing, um, you know, a, 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 a set of, uh, of objectives with NASA that we speak boldly about. I was on the floor of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory when the Mars rover landed, after going eight and a half months in space, and it landed, and it was a, it was a tremendous scientific uh, event for our country. It took a lot of money, it took a lot of effort, but first of all, it took the belief that it could be done. So we, I know there's a lot of interest in the help of mice. I visited a lot of your labs. I've been all over the country. But people are actually interested in the help of human beings. And there is a, there, there, these things are inextricably intertwined. I understand that you have to, to work in, in a certain way about, around these issues. But our goal should be to understand the human brain, to at least be able to lay, understand it physically. That's why we just put language in the appropriations bill um, that creates now a, uh, an agency working group on imaging, right? Because again, this is an area I know that you, you spent some time on, but it's very important that we kind of move from the darkness towards the light. And that we do it in a time frame that can inspire the country to make these investments. It's not like, I mean, we spent two billion a week in Afghanistan for 14 straight years, right? And the president just stood up and said, we're staying a while longer, right? Now, and he obviously has more information than I have. I'm not. But it's, this is a, we need to make sure that we bring a level of urgency uh, to this question, even though we're not going to get there tomorrow. And we didn't get to the moon. You know, it took a while, right? But we, you at first have to have the kind of the sense of where we're headed. So I, I'm going to be in the Congress for a, a, a long time to come. I'm going to be working on this. We're going to do a brain observatory, and I hope you're along for the ride. You should probably figure out more about what it's going to do than I should. I'm not a neuroscientist. But I'm going to tell you that we're going to make, and we, there's a bipartisan commitment to this, all right, that we're going to deal with this challenge uh, because it's an important step, and we see it now, you know, whether it's in the uh, European Union uh, or in China, uh, and I've been all, you know, I've visited and interacted and I want us to collaborate with our friends around the world. Uh, but our nation has the ability to help lead in this respect. So just like we have the premier agency in the world on space exploration, we need to think about the space in between our ears as a place where exploring is the number one scientific enterprise for our country uh, for the until we conquer these challenges, that should be first and foremost. That's what I'm up to. I'm happy that you're here. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that we're going to make tremendous disruptive progress in this arena. We're going to get the, we got the NIH, 
and we got the National Science Foundation and we got the